So good morning everyone. This is one of those days where, um, at least for me, when I get out, I look around and say, why do I have to go back to the office? This is great. Summer's been very long in, uh, in coming, but you know, I, I just um, I wanted to um, use this occasion to, uh, you know, to update folks on what's happening at the airport and to announce uh, the work that is being done for uh, the uh, airport's long-term future and what it will mean for the city and for Greater New Bedford more generally. So in my State of the City address back in March, um, I announced that we would be forming uh, a working group to set uh, the airport on a long-term course of not just sustainability but for success. We want this place to thrive in the long run because it is a significant economic asset to the region. There's no successful city in America, frankly, no city that, uh, that, that is capable of growing, capable of being autonomous, capable of being uh, sustainable that doesn't have uh, a functioning airport. It's part of being a city. That's the way that I see it. And it, uh, it, we are blessed here that we have an airport uh, that has worked well over the years, that uh, hasn't in the last, in, in recent years, focused so much on commercial aviation, but has been more uh, focused on general aviation. Uh, but we all know that uh, it, can, it can do both of those things and many other things uh, very well uh, if uh, with the right level of planning and investment. So in the last few years, we've worked very closely with, um, with the FAA uh, and with MassDOT. Uh, to ensure that those investments are, uh, were happening. Um, first under uh, the former administrator, uh, Eric DeLeon, and now under our current administrator, Scott Service, as well as the airport commission uh, headed up by Paul Barton. Um, but um, to my mind, uh, it's, it's time now that we take it to the proverbial next level. Uh, New Bedford's airport, our airport, uh, is situated geographically in an advantageous place. If you think about it, um, you know, commuting, going from here to Logan Airport is a chore. Uh, it is uh, even uh, on most days well over an hour's drive and can be far more than that during rush hour. Um, the Green Airport is not far as the crow flies, but uh, again, it's on the other side of Providence from us. So from New Bedford, it's about a 45 uh, minute drive. And we think that we can uh, bring business in, not just from Greater New Bedford, from Southeastern Mass, but also parts of uh, areas south of Boston, as well as Cape Cod, uh, and serve uh, not only the commercial aviation markets, but hopefully uh, freight, uh, as well as more general aviation, uh, as well as more as well as more corporate uh, aviation, and continue to support uh, Bridgewater State's uh, aviation school. So there's a lot here. Um, that's the, the takeaway. There's a lot of potential here and we have to activate it. And so uh, we have uh, gone about the business of forming a review committee uh, whose job is to, uh, to set uh, the, uh, the course for the airport uh, in the years ahead. Uh, and it, it was important to me to make sure that we have business leaders uh, who uh, they themselves fly a lot, but who also at the same time you know, understand uh, the, both the need, both the necessity, as well as uh, uh, the relevance of having a, a well-designed strategic plan in place to make that happen. So uh, I've asked um, the former CEO of Precise, Dave Slutes, to chair uh, that committee, and I'll ask Dave to come on up and say a few words in a moment, but Dave is, uh, Dave is a get-after-it kind of guy. He's, he was extremely successful and growing uh, precise into the company that it is today that employs over 400 uh, folks in our north end uh, and who is now heading up a very successful uh, consulting firm called Potentia. Uh, he'll tell you all about that. We'll offer him a free commercial when he, uh, he gets up there, uh, up, to the, up to the mic, Dave. Uh, but uh, I, I have tremendous confidence in Dave's ability uh, to bring people together to, to, uh, to move uh, the planning uh, effort along and to, uh, to make sure that uh, there's broad buy-in in, uh, in this effort. Um, we have been, uh, I've asked a number of other folks uh, to join this committee uh, as well. Uh, so they, let me, in no particular order, let me just uh, name who they are and many of them are familiar names um, to, uh, to all of you. 
So Ann Broholm, who's the CEO of AHEAD, which is uh, based in our industrial park, which is a leading manufacturer of, of uh, golf, uh, golf apparel. Uh, Bill Whalen Sr., who's the principal of Whalen Associates. Bill has been uh, a very successful developer, uh, commercial developer, uh, mostly in the, the Boston area over the course of his career, but as well as in, the, in Greater New Bedford. Uh, and continues to live in New Bedford in the same neighborhood where he grew up. Uh, Carlos Tacuna is the Senior Vice President of Webster Bank uh, and, and who is, uh, is a thoroughly experienced commercial lender and, uh, and knows, knows the full suite of businesses, the full array of businesses, is familiar with the full array of businesses here in Greater New Bedford who might use this uh, airport. Russ Olson, uh, who's a member of the Airport Commission, who is a um, retired chiropractor and a uh, a pilot, but who also is, is steeped in general aviation and who um, um, is somebody who's going to add tremendous value to, to this effort, and he's here today. Um, Jim Oliveira, former Ward 1 counselor, who is the executive director of the Workforce Investment Board of Greater New Bedford um, uh, as well. Jamie Shakoy, uh, who's the senior managing director of Accenture, uh, who's uh, based in, in the Greater New Bedford area, but who, because of his uh, long career in, in management consulting brings a, a tremendous value to uh, to the table. Paul Barton is the chair of the Regional Airport Commission, uh, who's been here uh, for a number of years and who is instrumental in, uh, in pardon the pardon the double entendre of instrumental. Right, we might there might be some aviation puns built in uh, here along the way. Um, uh, who was instrumental in helping the airport? Uh, achieve uh, Rule 139 status a few months ago from the FAA. That was an effort, multi-year effort, uh, by the commission, by the airport, by the city, uh, to open New Bedford up as a, uh, as a as a viable commercial airport. And then there's Richie Canastra, who's the president of the Wailing City uh, Display Auction, Seafood Display Auction, who uh, is himself an amateur pilot, uh, a very uh, experienced pilot, but. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that we had someone from the waterfront uh, here, from the fishing industry in particular, and he seemed like a, a natural choice because uh, he knows the industry as well as anybody, and, and there is uh, very some really interesting connections between uh, the, the waterfront and the airport that I think we can capitalize on. As I was walking in here today, it just so happened, just walking up the steps moments ago, I ran into, uh, into a gentleman who is the, the captain of three scallop boats, and he said, you know, are you building a new airport today? And he's probably, I'm sure he's downstairs right now. And he said, uh, I said, no, we're not build, building a new airport. We're developing this one. He said, that's great. I don't want to drive to Boston or Providence uh, to come up here to fish. And so uh, he is an example of, of what's happening on the waterfront now, the gravitation of much of the uh, East Coast fishing industry uh, to, uh, to the port of New Bedford. And that has... Uh, he's someone who goes commutes from North Carolina to, to, to here. Uh, that's an example of somebody who uh, would use this airport, uh, and there are many others like him. So we want to take advantage of those opportunities. You know, this is, uh, as folks will tell you, I mean, as I think we've demonstrated uh, demonstrated my time in office. Uh, I'm big into plans, uh, and I'm big into plans when they're focused on uh, the long term and. Uh, this, this, is, this airport is a tremendous economic asset uh, for the city and we need to make the very most of it um, uh, in order to uh, accentuate uh, the, the strength of our industries here but also to create uh, new ones as well and uh, we're very uh, pleased that we're able to assemble a very uh, strong team uh, here that will be uh, that will serve us well who will be served uh, by uh, by the airport staff headed up by Scott Service, whom you'll hear from in a moment, as well as the consulting firm that the group uh, selected to head up the strategic planning effort. That's, that's McFarland Johnson. They are uh, very experienced aviation consultants and they will, uh, they will be steering uh, us along the way. I will hear from them in a moment as well. So, but without any further ado, I want to bring up Dave Slutz. Uh, who, again, I couldn't be more happy, more thrilled and excited that uh, he was willing to step up and, um, and, and, uh, and head up this, uh, this effort on the city's behalf. Dave. Thank you, Mayor. I will not do a commercial about potential. We can talk about Moby Dick Brew Company for a while, but we'll skip, yeah. 
Uh, the reality, though, is Potentia's sole focus is on aerospace manufacturing, so I make parts of these aircraft now, so I have a very keen interest in making sure they fly well and they fly safe. But I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, John, Mayor asked me to do this. I'm like, why wouldn't I do this? Uh, I've flown over a million miles myself, and I'm sick and tired of driving up north or driving out west. I want to be go, go to this airport and be on a, be on a flight wherever I want to go. The business park needs access all over the world. For example, we mentioned Anne from Ahead, she's based in Sweden. Wouldn't it be nice if her boss could fly right here? That's gonna happen. Wouldn't it be nice if Precise, my old manufacturer, could fly equipment directly into this airport and not get stuck in customs up in Logan? That can happen too. So yeah, I'm excited about this. Worth mentioning too is, I've lived here 18 years and uh, people ask me why are you still here? Well, I'm still here because I moved 11 times, but I believe this is the place to be. Why is the place to be? Well, what, what other city of our size has a port, the number one fishing port in North America, has highway access, east, west, north, south, has soon to have the train down from Boston to bring folks our way plus go north, and we have an airport. You can't build a new airport today. You could never permit this amount of land anytime in, in the future. So we already have the infrastructure in place. The key is how we leverage it, not just for commercial, but for industrial use, for civil aviation, as well as there's no reason we couldn't look at having some, some type of business park around this, like you see in Manchester. There's no reason Boston can't support another airport. You've got Manchester North, you've got Worcester West. Why aren't we, so we are the southern, southern tier. This place can support that much activity. I was born in Chicago. I flew out of O'Hare all the time, nice big airport. Moved to Kalamazoo as a teenager. Kalamazoo, AZO is the code. How big is Kalamazoo? 100,000 people. That sounds about right, right? Kalamazoo's terminal looked just like this in the 1970s. I was there last week with my father. It's double the size, and Stryker now, Stryker, who placed an offer for Boston Scientific last week, a $50 billion offer, has 33,000 employees in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Why can they do that? They have an airport. It attracts and keeps people, just like Pfizer's there for the same reason. So, John mentioned all the great things we've got going on. It's exciting as heck to lead this world-class team. I'm fired up. We are going to get after it. We have the right consulting firm going forward. By the end of the year, we hope to produce the report and then introduce you to those results. So again, thank you, John, for the introduction. Thank you for the team. And now back to John, Mayor Mitchell. All right. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. I want to uh, no. I want to thank you, Dave. And I think you hit the nail on the head. You you couldn't. This asset is here, and you you couldn't even if you wanted to. You couldn't build something like this if it, if it weren't here and uh, and that's really important to, to know it's 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 right here to to make the most of and that's that's what we plan to do uh, I, I do want to um, uh, I want to thank uh, by the way uh, um, uh, the other commission members who are here today Jason Oliveira is, is here is, and Russ Olson uh, is here and I want to call up now uh, and I thank them for for their support of this effort I want to call up now uh, Paul Barden, who's the chairman of the Airport uh, Commission, uh, to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, everyone. First, I'd like to thank the members of the Airport Commission for their hard work, dedication, and professionalism over the last couple of years. As we venture off into this new journey of creating a business atmosphere here, a lot has been done in the last couple of years that you really don't notice. But as the mayor said before, like our 139 certification, uh, we were the first airport in the last 20 years in entire New England to receive a 139 certification. So that tells you the hard work and effort put in by the city administration, the city councilors, and the commissioners to ascertain that certification. We also have the TSA here now. So what has happened in the last year or two, we've built a firm, solid foundation to build on. And as a carpenter by trade, I know, and I'm sure you folks know, that you really can't build something sound or something solid without a good set of plans. We need a blueprint from this point on to lead us in the right direction that will not only help the, the community here, but help the business community, serve the aviation community, as well as the folks of Greater New Bedford. So I just want to say that I'm proud to be part of this team. I look forward to the future. Thank you very much. All right, let me, uh, let me next call up another member of the commission, and that's Carlos Tacuna. Again, Carlos uh, is uh, not just a New Bedford resident, but the senior vice president for 
commercial lending at uh, Webster Bank, uh, who has issued uh, many loans, has been responsible for many loans to, uh, to major businesses in our city, and has a keen understanding of, uh, of their needs, including uh, their, their uh, need to connect with other businesses by, by air. Carlos. Good morning, everyone. Mr. Mayor, thank you uh, for the opportunity to be part of this effort, for your uh, good wisdom to invest and lead this uh, work group, and to David Slutz for, for his, uh, taking on the responsibility of providing us with the, with, the, with, the, with the leadership as we go forward as well. The airport has been uh, a municipal asset for about uh, 80 years now. And, uh, and over the last, as you've heard, whether or not it was from the mayor or from uh, Mr. Barton, we have invested a significant amount of dollars here in infrastructure and uh, FAA, FAA licensing and so forth over the last uh, uh, five to six years. And, and now it's time to monetize that, uh, that investment uh, in order to be able to continue to create jobs and in order to, to be able to continue to, to help local companies, as the mayor indicated earlier, in, uh, you know, in whether or not it's transportation, whether or not it's to move uh, uh, goods from here to other parts of the world or from other parts of the world uh, here. I'll give you an example. For example, a client of ours about uh, two years ago was looking to, to bid on a contract over on the islands and he was trying to understand uh, how, from a competitive standpoint, he was going to be able to transport these crews on a daily basis over to the islands for the entirety of the project. And that's when we worked with one of our uh, FBOs here, uh, and uh, and we found a uh, an effective, cost-effective uh, uh, way to actually transport uh, their workers on a daily basis from here to to, to the island. So it was a, a solution by leveraging uh, you know a fantastic municipal resource to help the business create good jobs, good local jobs. That company, most of those employees are actually in the Bedford residents. And that's sort of from my vintage point, that's sort of the opportunity that this fantastic municipal asset has to, to offer, uh, you know. But as Mr. Barton indicated as well, we need to understand what our growth opportunities are, what our strategic options are, so that, uh, you know, so that, so that as the, you know, we do need some at-bats in order to bring on some additional business to, to the airport, but we don't want to swing at every pitch, right? So we want to make sure that we narrow what it is that we are going to be good at and then leverage that as we go forward in order to maximize the opportunity that, that this fantastic municipal asset does represent to us. So I'm looking forward to working with David Slutz and the rest of the group, fantastic group of local leaders, and, and to the mayor for the opportunity to be part of the process. Thanks, Carlos. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Um, you know, I, I should mention, you know, we, I, I just used the, uh, the fishing example as uh, as a place where there is potential to to bring people in and out of uh, the, the city who have business here, but you know there's another obvious uh, set of examples with the offshore wind industry, with the announcement uh, a couple of weeks ago of the first uh, award of a, t of a tentative contract for uh, the, the nation's first utility-scale offshore wind farm. There will be people traveling to New Bedford from Europe and from other parts of the United States in the years to come. Uh, for the foreseeable future, and therein lies uh, uh, a source of potential business here and, and, and an opportunity for uh, for the airport to serve uh, the regional economy, especially the maritime economy. Um, so, and in speaking of the economy, uh, we, we are uh, I'm so pleased that we have somebody uh, as part of the working group who uh, has probably the, the best combination of understanding of. Uh, the region's uh, workforce needs and the, uh, the, the way that the airport interacts with this part of the city and the neighborhoods to the north and, and uh, the businesses to the south, and that's, uh, that's Jim Oliveira, the executive director of the Workforce Investment Board and former uh, Ward 1 city councilor. So, uh, Jim, thank you for, for being part of this. It's, uh, I think you're going to add tremendous value and just ask you to come on up and say a few words. So uh, first of all, I want to thank the mayor for uh, asking me to participate and serve on, on this uh, working group. Uh, I feel honored to be among uh, the professionals that uh, are comprising the group and I think that uh, it's going to be an interesting journey over the next couple few months to develop this, this, 
this uh, blueprint and business plan. I, I would say that, you know, I've been involved in the airport for over the last 20 years, and the goal over time was to continue to improve the asset. And so the, this, this transcended over several commissions, uh, for which over $40 million has come into this airport for both our runway improvements and for what we call airport improvement uh, projects as well on an annual basis. So this has been monumental in terms of improve the asset and, and people will come at some point. Well, they are coming, but we, we do need a plan. And the plan it requires not only understanding the business aspects, the, these, these, the, uh, the threats, the opportunities, but how are we going to get this done? How are we going to sell this to, to the external public? And that's going to be our role. There are many jobs that are already affiliated with this airport. Uh, there's been an economic impact study that, that, that stated that over t there's an over $10 million impact currently. And I would think the goal would be to double that in the next five to 10 years. In order to do that, it requires a, an integral team that, that, that includes economic development, includes workforce development, be, to be able to develop plans strategically to uh, put together training programs that will in integrate with the airport community. So that's our that's our intention. I've already started talking to uh, Four Seas Community College on the on the Cape. They've got a great aviation mechanic program that uh, they've been they've been operating with the uh, with the Cape Cod Tech, and I can't see why they can't bring it here as well. I'm looking forward to working with everyone, and I thank the mayor again for putting me on this on this team. Thank you, Chip. Um, and it's worth it's worth noting too that this airport in the past has supported a considerably larger volume of commercial uh, aviation, uh, and it used to be the case that folks could fly from here, you know, to uh, to New York and, and beyond. And so, in so far as there are any neighborhood concerns about uh, about growth here, it, I would say I would say this: that this there used to be a much larger airport with with larger uh, with larger um, Aircraft coming in, and so you know we're not uh, we're not attempting something here that uh, is uh, completely dissimilar from that which already existed. Um, I want to call up now uh, Scott Service, uh, the director of the airport, uh, who's been involved in all these efforts along the way to uh, and who's doing a great job himself uh, to say a few words. Scott. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to say that I'm excited about this opportunity. Uh, airport managers kind of get caught up a lot on day-to-day -day things. You know, it's a it's a large airport. It's 871 acres. I got an assistant manager, principal clerk, and four maintenance guys to maintain the entire place, street side and air side, and that can keep you busy. And the sometimes the business opportunities kind of get lost in the, the shuffle. So by doing this business plan, it it puts our focus back on growing and offering a real regional airport with the possibilities for the area around us and uh, looking forward to the investigation, what we find out and the positives and uh, that's about it. And most of everything else has been said. Thanks. All right, thanks Scott. Um, last, uh, I, I want to call up Rick Lucas from McFarland Johnson. Um, you know, McFarland Johnson was selected in a, a public procurement uh, process to be the consultant to facilitate the strategic planning uh, process and, and uh, the firm is uh, has a breadth of experience and depth of experience that will uh, really help us put together a thoughtful plan that is uh, will be immediately actionable. We have tremendous confidence in, in that. Um, and the, the group itself uh, here with Dave and Scott um, uh, heading it up uh, selected uh, McFarland among uh, the other bidders. And uh, we're so pleased to have uh, to have you guys uh, on board, and uh, look forward to the work ahead, Rick. Thank you. We're definitely excited about this project here, not only because we're all staffed out of Massachusetts, so we are local, uh, but in, at the same time, it's very rare that you have an airport with superior facilities within the region, because that translates into superior opportunities, and so it's rare that we have to get to work on that. So we're excited that the team is staffed with former airport managers, former airline staff and employees, which allow us to have a really unique perspective uh, because we do this stuff all across the country, but this is actually in our backyard. 
uh, and because the opportunity to present itself makes us really excited to work on this project. So thank you again for the opportunity. Thanks, Ray. Appreciate it. All right. All right, let me open it up to questions. Yeah, so I, I, so fair to say, Viv, we're looking the at the end of the calendar year. Well, so, you know, at just at a very general level, the place doesn't have a true st strategic plan. MassDOT worked with the airport some seven or eight, six or eight years ago on what was dubbed a strategic plan, but was the strategic plan was a bit of a misnomer. It was really a, a capital asset plan as opposed to something that addressed uh, the, the strategic vision of the airport, like what kind of airport do we want to be and what will it take uh, for this place to uh, achieve that goal. I and mean, that's what really this, this exercise is about. Um, you know, and the vision for the airport will be informed by, uh, by the, the local economic conditions, its relation to other uh, airports, um, you know, conditions in aviation, all the aviation markets that, uh, that this airport might participate in, and many, many other things. Uh, so um, all to be seen, all to be analyzed by uh, this very capable group. That remains to be seen. I mean, Rick could probably uh, address that that question. I mean, it's, I, I don't know if, if if it's putting you know the cart before the horse to uh, to, to to say that we have a particular uh, something we, we want to emulate, but there may be some ones that that good examples of ones that work pretty well. Definitely with similar airports. We're actually doing a study for Wilmington, Delaware, right now, which is outside of Philadelphia, populated region, large uh, general aviation base. They've had on and off again commercial service at that airport. Um, even look at, uh, along Connecticut, you places like New London, New Haven, Bridgeport are all similar airports that we want to take a look at. Um, if you've seen one airport, you've seen one airport, and they're all very different, which is why we look at what, what's similar and what's worked elsewhere and versus what we hear from boots on the ground with uh, working with this excellent group here. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. We look forward to the work. Thank you. Thanks. Nice job. Thank you, Thank you.